Hi folks, welcome back. Today I thought I would expand a little bit about on the business card imposition video that I did a couple weeks ago. So a quick ref refresher, we created this file in that video. Basically it's just a couple different names, 24 up on a sheet, uh, 12 by 18, and I showed you how to essentially create crop marks and then both do a front and back uh, paste up to make a uh, 24 up layout to send to press. So I wanted to expand on it a little bit. Basically what if you have, that's the video that I did there was was fine if you just had maybe one or two names, uh, but what if you had like 48 names or what if you had like a hundred names or a thousand names um, that you needed to typeset and then you also needed to do an imposition on. So using Adobe InDesign you can use the data merge function there's tons of videos out there that people have done probably a better job than me explaining how to do it, but I'm going to give a quick rundown of how it works and basically how we can apply that to a business card imposition layout. So first things first, I have a CSV file here and basically what it is, names, a job title, phone, and an email. Uh, you can set this up in Excel or Google Sheets. You just need to make sure that once you're done, don't save it as an Excel file. You need to save it as either a CSV or a, a, a text file, a comma delimited or a tab delimited text file or CSV will work with Adobe InDesign's data merge. So from there, what, I've, what I have is two files. There is a 1-up business card layout and then a 24 business card layout, which is essentially this imposition setup copied. But let me start with the 1-up. So if I kind of move things out of the way here, you can see I have a front and back. And what I've done is I've set it up to be 3.5 by 2. I have a quarter, or uh, excuse me, a 1 eighth of an inch bleed on the left and the right hand side and there's a 1 16th of an inch bleed on the top and the bottom and that essentially fits with that imposition layout that I did in that previous video. So what I've done here, I've, I already have this set up but if you go into data merge and you select the data source you're going to select the um, 48 name CSV file and basically what it's going to do is it's going to give you all of the different um, columns in that CSV file that we can use to apply to a data merge. And so what you do is you, you essentially just highlight the uh, whatever text that you want to replace. And so in this case, there's a, a name, job title, phone number, email, and then the other elements that are on the page are going to be static. So if I click the preview button, you can see these items are going to change. There's the names, the, the uh, uh, job titles, and then the phone number and the email are going to change as well. These are just some random names that I generated through an AI bot. So from here, what you can do is you can either create a merge document or I can export this to a PDF. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to export it and I'm just going to leave everything all records and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to use my uh, preset that I have here that includes a, uh, a bleed setting which is going to pull from the document here and then if I want to I can also add some crop marks and some page information I'll, I'll just I'll add crop marks and I'll offset them uh, 0.125 so I'll hit export and I'll just call this uh, 48 names so I'd save quickly it'll generate the PDF it'll tell me at the end great no uh, text was overset and then if I scroll through real quick you can see it's got the front and the back and then the names change as I as I go from one page to the next and I ended up with a total of 96 pages because this is obviously front and back together so 48 names times 2 90, 96 so from here I can take that that uh, uh, 96 page PDF file and I can open up my imposition and I can place all 48 in here and then I have to go to page 2 and place all the back sides. The, uh, fortunately for us the back side is um, static but what if it had also had information that needed to change as well. Um, 
it's just a little tedious to go through and change these all one by one. And uh, you know, I, I prefer to have the automation of the software kind of take care of that for me. So there's two ways that we can set this up. The first way is to uh, use some kind of software to automatically impose this for, for us. Now, if you have like Fiery Impose, you can drop that in and then use a template or just create a template and then basically just go boom, boom, boom and um, move down and create a 24 up uh, layout and then put all 24 on page one for, and then uh, the second 24 on page two and there you go, you have all 48. You can also use um, a free online uh, imposition software called PDF Snake. Um, this is free to try. I think it's like 150 bucks to register and, and pay for like per year or per lifetime. I'm not sure. Right now, I just have a, a free account. I haven't used this software in a long time. It used to be like a standalone app that you would install on your computer, but now it's all um, cloud-based. So you just go to the pdfsnake.app, and from here you would either create a, a new account, and once you've done that, you can do the uh, like free to try, which is what I've done here. So I'm going to click Browse to begin, and I'm going to uh, grab my file that I created here. We just created that one. This is one I did earlier. Um, so I'm going to hit Open, and as you can see here, it's got page one all the way down to 96. So if I go back up here, I zoom out a little bit, you can see here's my front and the back. And then basically uh, on the left-hand side, there's different tools that we can do. Um, I'm not really gonna touch on these other ones, but essentially you can do things like, you know, nudge certain elements of a PDF over to the left or right. You can do different things with it. Um, basically what we're uh, trying to do is use the a card layout except that the card layout that they have if you select this it's going to place uh, one particular name multiple up on a sheet and that's not what we want to do we want to place more than one name up on a sheet so I'm going to select the grid here and you can see by default it starts off and it's putting all uh, one name multiple up on a sheet and what it's done is it's actually just scaled it up to fit onto the sheet so we're going to change the sheet actually we're going to make this uh, 12 by 18 size in, uh, 18 inches and then I'm going to uncheck that auto scale and that way it kind of zoom out a little bit so that way it kind of it goes back to what its original size is and so uh, I'm going to do this as a stack I don't want to do it as a step and repeat I want each name to be separate from each other so this is double sided. So I'm gonna let that know as soon as I hit the double side, you can see the back side shifts over here because when it rotates, this side of the page is the front, this side of the page is gonna be the back. And then I want to do, um, oh, I gotta go up here and go, I want three columns and eight rows. And so now it's gonna set this 24 up and you can see there sh should be a total of 24 names on this sheet, which there are. And then I'm going to create gutters. So I want a 0.25 along the horizontal and a 0.125 along the vertical. I want to center this on the page. So it puts everything in the center. Uh, the bleed is going to pull from the, uh, the information from the docket. So as long as you set up everything correctly in the first step in InDesign, which, which we did here, um, as long as everything is set up correctly with bleeds here it'll pull that information correctly if not you can tell it you can go fix bleeds and you can tell it exactly what you uh, what it's supposed to be but in this case I'm just gonna tell it hey looking to pull the information from the PDF so I also want to draw the crop marks I'm gonna give it a line length of 0.25 inches a distance of 0.125 and then it's a little too thick for my taste so I'm gonna go 0.25 on the points and that'll thin out the the uh, uh, line length a little bit so basically now it's it's done it's, we've created this 24 up on a sheet this 12 by 18 size sheet I have page one here and I have page two here or three basically page one and two three and four 
total of four pages. So everything's set to go. From here, you just go download PDF. And this will, um, let me go back to my desktop. And if I open this up in Acrobat, you can see I have a 48 up, or four, excuse me, two page, 24 up PDF front and back. And if I turn on my page display, go to page view. So this is page, or uh, sheet one, or sheet one, and then sheet two, and you can see the names are changing as I scroll back and forth through the pages. So that's one way to do it. Uh, PDF Snake is, is pretty pretty nice. Um, like I said, I used it a long time ago. I haven't really used it um, uh, too often uh, recently, but there are, are different things that you can do here. Um, and I can go in a future video, I'll, I'll show you how to do some different things with this, but for now that works out for what we needed it. So anyway, the second part is to do it directly within InDesign um, using the data merge, but the multi up option. So if I go back to my original layout and I have my data merge, I can create a merge document. Okay, so there's an option in here to create a multiple or multiple record layout per sheet. Now in this case it's not going to work because number one we have two pages to this InDesign document and number two you can't really take this information and put it multiple up on a sheet because it already occupies the full sheet. So what I've done is I've created a second InDesign document that's basically based off of this imposition that we created in the other video. So if I zoom out here it's the same layout that I had from before, except that it's only one page. And what I've done is I've pasted page one right here on page one and put it in the spot, in the uh, first layout spot, like we did in the previous video. And I have the same data merge. Everything is um, set up exactly the same name, job title, et cetera, et cetera, right? I also have two parent size sheets set up. First parent size sheet, if I hit my W key for uh, preview, this is where I have all of my uh, crop marks set up. Now, if you had the crop marks on page one and you went into your create merge document, it would not allow you to create multiple up because InDesign looks at all elements that are on the page, including the crop marks here. So if you're going to tell it, I want to put this this part multiple up, it's going to go, oh, he wants to put this and all of this stuff multiple up on a sheet. Well, obviously there's no room to put it multiple up on a sheet, so the, it's, the option is just going to be grayed out. However, if you put the crop marks onto a master page, which is what I've done here, and you've put the backside on another master page, which is what I've done here. I've just taken all the information from this um, InDesign document and I've uh, copied it and pasted it and then put it 24 up manually, um, step and repeating it. But I put it on the, the B uh, parents, parent sheet, not on page two of the document. So that way it allows me to go into data merge and I can come here and create a merge document and I want to uh, put uh, multiple records and I want to use the same margins that I have here. So in this case, it's uh, uh, three eighths of an inch from the left hand side and a half inch from the top. And that's basically from this reference point in the top left hand corner of the business card. So if I click on preview multiple record layout, you'll see not only does it take all of the records and put it multiple up on a sheet, but it also in, uh, it also in, uh, moves through and does it for all the different names. So you can't really see it because it's uh, we're too too far zoomed out, but each one of these is a different record from the CSV file. So once I hit OK. It's going to roll through here. It's going to create a brand new document. You can see this dash one, which is D 
different from this one and it's going to tell me okay no overset text was generated and then if I zoom in here you can see here are the different names that have been created and if I have if I go through here to the pages it's created two different pages this is the first 24 records and this is the second 24 records now I can export this right now but it does not include the backside so what we have to do here is I'm gonna to have to create a new page after page 2 and after page 4 and then what I'm gonna do is right click and then I go to apply parent uh, to pages and I want the B parent to be applied and I'm going to go page 2 comma page 4 and then I click OK and now it went ahead and it put in the uh, information from the B parent on pages 2 and 4 so now if I scroll through I have a four page PDF file front and back front and back and now if I export this I can go to call it 48 names here export and it'll open it up for me and here I have essentially the same uh, PDF that I created oh except I forgot to, to I forgot to uncheck the crop marks I don't need the additional crop marks on there let me save it again yeah let me take off all the crop marks okay so essentially this created the same uh, setup that we used uh, that we got from the PDF snake file so if my if I turn on the two, two page scrolling here here's the front and the back of page one here's the front and the back of page or a uh, sheet two and if I scroll back and forth you can see all the names change and that's it so that's how you quickly do it I, I say quickly it took me 16 minutes but that was because I was taking my time explaining it all but you could quickly do you know 48 names or if you had a database that was um, let's say not 48 maybe it was like you know 200 names or something like that you could quickly go through and create not only the typesetting but you can also lay it out using that um, uh, multiple uh, record copy through data merge so you can impose it at the same time and then you can just send that file over to your printer and get your cards printed so hope that helps and uh, as always if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down below I appreciate everybody commenting watching and uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.